Hey everyone, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic, intelligent critic. And this is relevant because we're going to talk about TV this time around. We're going to talk reality TV, which uh, you know a lot more about than I do. Yeah. That was sort of a sentence. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing I, I want to stress is that, you know, look, uh, internet being the whole geek area and everything, it's become very fashionable to say, oh, reality TV, bad, rah, rah, rah. And I'm here to warn you right away that uh, that's not how we feel. We're actually going to talk about the good things about reality TV. Yeah. Uh, when it started back, like, almost 15, 20 years ago, with Survivor and all that, I was as reluctant as everybody else. I was like, Arr. Yeah, that, yeah. I totally agree. Back then, it was like, oh, look, how... Stupid human tricks. It was pretty much what it was. Yeah. It was new at the time. They didn't know what they were doing, but now they're pretty good. And so we're actually going to praise it. Uh, so a question to ask is like, how has the evolution gone? Like what makes a good reality TV as opposed to, you know, old reality TV? Well, it, it's in the name really for me. First off, it has to be real. No fakey situations. Uh, the best example of that is Survivor. Uh Survivor was clamored as in, you know, you put those people on an island and they have to survive. Mm -hmm. Then you watch it and they're on an island, but they get food provided for them. They have rice, so they're not going to starve. Mm -hmm. And then they get eliminated by doing those crazy, silly games, you know, like some agility games and stuff like that. That's not what Survivor was. He was advertised. Advertised that, yeah. And uh, it's kind of silly and gimmicky. And, you know, that's not what really what I was expected. I, I, if I want to look watch reality tv i would like something real survivor is really a game show on sand yeah that's what it is and um, well, the reason why i don't watch uh, survivor is because i don't even like the concept of the game show because it's so underhanded it's like who how many people can you screw over and, and and not screw over like the mall where it's like well the game is trying to discover who's screwing you over so it's okay to screw over people yeah like this is a game where it's like you really like trying to get favors and then double crossing them and that's reward and i'm like ew and and the winner is not who survives the longest on the island it's like at the end there's like the last few survivors they vote on who 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 they want to win and it's like that's ridiculous they always choose oh he played the game better yeah because for some reason that's that's the, the, the parameter that they decided he played the banger well, not who you want to win it's mm. who played the game better that's ridiculous i mean arbitrary ways of deciding who wins arbitrary it's just it's it's very fake for reality but that tells you a little bit the values of the sort of people that go on to those you know <laughs> It's like they, they don't really respect niceness. Like reality TV, for especially the ones that start, like a Survivor is one of the first ever. Yeah. It's not a culture or circle that respects kindness. <laughs> I, you guess, know? I guess not. This is not a culture where it goes like, hey, you're a good guy. I like you, man. Here's, here's 10 bucks to help you out because I know you're having trouble right now. It's like, hey, you're a good guy, sap. <laughs> <laughs> I guess good guys always finish last. That's what it goes. <laughs> That's the mentality. Because I remember about three or five, four years later, yeah, around the third or fourth season of Survivor, there was a new show that Fox came up with, which was Temptation Island. And the concept of that was that the uh, couples, young couples, very much in love, that want to test their love, uh, are sent to separate islands. The girls are on one side and the guys are on one side. And, you know, and then a whole bunch of whores are sent their way <laughs> to try to tempt them away from each other. And there was quite a stink about it. It was like, oh, it's so immoral. On this podcast, we use the word escort. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I remember it was like, oh, it's so immoral and it's wrong and they're breaking up couples. Yeah, and Newsweek made a piece about that, if I remember correctly. Wow. <laughs> and for me, it was like, but that's better than Survivor because whoever wins is the people who keep it in their pants. So the moral here is keep it in your pants. Yeah. And nobody forced them to go on the island. Nobody forced... It's not like, okay, you, you young couples are going on the island to test your relationships. You know, they're contestants that decided to go there. Yeah. So I don't see the immoral part of it. They decided to put themselves in that situation. True. And even if you are in that situation, it's not like the horse have guns and go like, you're going you're gonna to F me now. You know? <laughs> like, lick me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> you watch that show, it's hilarious because you don't understand how these people fall for it. And and like I'm not like I'm I'm warm blooded. I understand that a very sexy woman in a bikini or a very sexy man with like that those amazing six pack keeps coming on to you, you're gonna be tempted. But I mean, as tempted as I understand I will be, you know, when there's a prize on top of the girlfriend in my mind. No would not be that hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because even if, like, I'm going like, oh, well, you know, this woman's hot, and maybe it won't work out with this girl that I'm with anyway, and maybe she's already doing it with the other guys there. Doesn't matter. Focus on the prize. Take the money, and then you can purchase your own whores. Yes. Escorts. <laughs> Escorts. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, well, you, you've mentioned in passing some of the Master Chef and uh, the 97th season of Hell's Kitchen. Yes. <laughs> All right, so the two shows are kind of similar. They both deal with the kitchen. One's more about cooking, one's more about restaurant management, but still. Yeah. And they both have uh, Chef uh, Ramsey Gordon at, as the head of it, although he shares that with two other people over at MasterChef. Who are yeah. really cool. I like that. They're cool, but they're, they're really... People see Gordon. <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah, but uh, they, they have equal screen time, at least. Yeah. It's, it's just that he has a more recognizable name. Yes, and unfortunately, one of them is forced to do commercials about cookware <laughs> every time he's on. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's from Master Chef. Okay, let's explain what Master Chef is and Hell's Kitchen briefly. Hell's Kitchen. If you haven't heard of it, uh, well, uh, welcome to the land of television. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's two teams of cooks um, that get weeded out slowly until one winner uh, gets the prize. And the prize is usually they get to run their own restaurant that's owned by Ramsay. Or they get a job at a very fancy restaurant that's also well-known. Not owned by Ramsay, but Ramsay pretty much takes his reputation and I'm going to find you a good chef and, you know. All right. That's yeah. Right. And uh, the, the, the challenge essentially is that they have to serve dinner service at Hell's Kitchen, which is a very demanding uh, kitchen. Not least because... Ramsey has very high standards, yeah. and also because the people going over there know it's Hell's Kitchen, and they're Hollywood people, and they like to make a scene. And essentially, it's that. It's just how well they can they manage a kitchen. And what I've noticed from the later seasons is that half of them, I can see potential for leadership and being this great cook, and the other half seem to be there just to stir the pot. Yes. <laughs> and I find that, I don't know. It's kind of cheating. It's entertaining, but I feel it, it in another way. It's kind of cheating for reality TV. Mm. I mean, it should be you should hire again for achievement sakes the better you know the better chefs, the ones that are more likely to get the job. It's like so you think you can dance if you take like ten good dancers and ten are just going to create trouble and you know trip the other dancers to see how they <laughs> deal with it. That'd be wrong. <laughs> you know? That would be entertaining as all hell, but. <laughs> <laughs> But that's pretty much what's going on in Hell's Kitchen, though. Like, I don't remember which season, but there was this one contestant. Uh, what's her name again? Elise. Elise? Yeah. Yeah. Who could not help but pick on this poor girl, Carrie, who is, was slowly but surely losing her mind by the end of the season until she got kicked out. Yeah. And I felt so bad for the girl. Everybody felt bad except for Elise, pretty much. <laughs> it's true. And because she was relentless, and it wasn't just like arguing about the cooking and everything, like, she would argue about the cooking, and Carrie would go like, oh, okay, you know what, you're, I'm done. And she would walk away. Elise would follow her and go, your face makes me want to puke. And she would turn to the other girls like, doesn't her face make you want to puke? And it's like, how is this relevant to anything? Like, this <laughs> no, is completely there's, psychotic. There's a dinner service going on. People are waiting for their food. How are you helping? <laughs> <laughs> this is completely psychotic. And as awful as I feel for Carrie, and as awful as I think Elise is, I'm almost angrier at all the other girls in her team who just stand there and sort of let it happen. It's sort of like you're in a competition that's going to measure your leadership. How about you show it now by, you know, standing up for the poor girl that's being completely and utterly obliterated? Like, I'm, and I'm not using this word lightly because I know it's being thrown around all the time, but like this girl who's being bullied. <laughs> yeah. But I think they don't quite understand because they're still understanding it's about leadership they just think it's about cooking mm. so they're thinking she's bullying the other girl the other mm -hmm. girl's gonna crack she's gone and Ramsey's never gonna choose the bully because she's a bully mm. so she's gone more chances for me so they don't want to get involved right so I think it's all about gamesmanship but that's very stupid because that's poor leadership in the kitchen that's true it's, it's a very dumb strategy it's also, a, but some of them also fall into it, like because you know what happens with kids with the bullying is that you know a lot of the kids see this kid being 
bullied relentlessly by the other one, they're sort of intimidated by the one who's bullying for obvious reasons. Yeah. And what what happens is that cognitive dissonance kicks in and they sort of rationalize why they're not, they're too scared of doing something by saying, oh, well, the other kid deserves it. I guess so. And there, there's one, at least one or two of the girls who did that where it's like, oh, Carrie's so annoying. Like, there's always drama with Carrie. And it's like, Carrie's not the one creating the drama. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you blind? <laughs> At one point, like, Elise is saying poop about Carrie, and, like, Carrie going, like, oh, you guys are talking behind my back? Not cool. And one of the girls going, like, how dare you say we talk about your back? You were from us? Like, because you were. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> were. <laughs> and what's really interesting, I think you, the, the troublemaker thing is right, and it's been going on, because they're supposed to be chefs. Yeah. Okay? I know Ramsay has crazy, insane standards of quality, but you should know how to cook fish. <laughs> You know, if the fish is raw and you're a chef, you should see that the fish is raw. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's just for drama, though. I have this theory that Ramsay is trying to see who has leadership by seeing how they deal with that. Okay. You know. That's possible, yeah. Those are professional chefs, so they should know how to cook. Yeah. And we can contrast that to Master Chef. Yes. Which are amateurs trying to get a deal, you know, trying to live their dreams of cooking and get a book deal. And being amateurs, they actually know how to cook on like the Hell's Kitchen one. I know. <laughs> like, I've never seen a contestant of MasterChef screw up a scallop. Like, I'm just saying. I know. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't know certain things, like, about presentation. Like, yeah. at one point, some guy he put uh, on rice, he put, like, a piece of meat to the bone. You're not supposed to do that because yeah. you can't cut it. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, that, that's a minor mistake. It's it's obvious if, you, if you're, you know, if you're in that domain, but if you're just an amateur... You're just trying to make it look nice. <laughs> yeah. Adrian was the king of the fugly dish. I mean, it wasn't there one time where they had to replicate the dish. And I was like, oh, let, let me do this for you. And the guy, he grabs the proper plate and he replays the dish in front of him just for him. And everybody that was looking at the chef rearranging thing, they were like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, Joe. Joe, who is uh, one of the judges who mostly represents Italian cooking. Yeah. He delights in scaring the crap out of the contestants. Yeah. He gives them ugly stares. He, he, he'll he be the first one to go like, this is below us now, so I'm going to throw this in the garbage. You know? Well, he, he's kind of easy, <clears throat> but as the season gets hot, farther and farther, his standards rise because yeah. you're expecting the better contestants, right? So he gets really, really angry when he gets a bad dish yeah. at the, near the end of the, the series. Oh, he gets so angry. <laughs> oh, when they move from uh, top uh, 10 to top 5, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it was top 16 to top 8, I think. Like, well, at the halfway mark, is yeah. what I'm saying. Like, his standards went up, like, two grades, and it was so <laughs> obvious. Like, it was like, this is not the same Joe. <laughs> yeah. This is the Joe that's going to make you pee your pants. <laughs> Get your chef. He's a southern cooking yeah. chef. Southern cooking chef. And he's very nice. And yeah. he, he gets paid to do all the promotion, I guess. <laughs> yeah, every time he... It's hilarious. Every time he visits one of the uh, contestants while he, they're cooking, it's like, a, huh, how, how about those knives? Those knives by this company. It's like butter cutting in with them, isn't it? Yeah. That's because they have a ceramic blade. This and that. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> These pans are non-stick and they distribute the heat evenly. And you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like... And, I can just imagine being a contestant that going, dude, I have 45 minutes. Can we do this another time? Can we please do this another time? Uh, Tell you what, I will open and close the Viking oven so you can shoot the Viking sign every time for a few seconds, all right? And Ramsey, of course, who tries to be Ramsey again. <laughs> he's great. Well, he's actually much nicer. Yeah, he's he is. much, much nicer. He's nicer because he knows he's dealing with amateurs. Yeah. But when the dish is bad, he's... Um, so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he always says that. That and let the knife do the work. He <laughs> loves that expression. <laughs> yeah, but then we saw a contestant trying to gut a fish without letting the knife do the work. And you go like, that's why he reminds them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, they had to, to scale a fish and then cut it in, into fillets. And Ramsey's doing a demonstration. And I'm sure your two chefs in the back are like, show off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the the southern chef knows how to do it. He knows yeah. everything. That guy. I know. It's, it's during the trial eliminations where they're just tasting other people's dishes and see if they're gonna make it to the competition. He's like, 
Oh, alligator, eh? Yeah. Alligator's very game, man. You have to cook it this way. It's like, how do you know how to cook alligator? What the hell? <laughs> I know. And you're like, okay. And then this Korean woman shows up, and she shows that, like, this is a traditional Korean dish. I was like, oh, in that dish, this is very important. And I was like, okay, wait, you know alligator <laughs> and Korean cooking? Like, what the heck? And I said, oh, this haggis, you know, <laughs> it, it kept all the juice inside, and he knows about haggis, too? <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> so, sushi served on the top of naked woman. You know you need to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there was one guy who presented that. What the heck? And it was hilarious because Ramsey was eating off her because, you know, he has to. And he was a bit uncomfortable. But what's hilarious is that the girl who was naked with the sushi, she's the cook's wife. Yeah. And you could tell that she was like, she was orgasming right there. Like, <laughs> this was totally her fetish. Like, this guy just showed up there because his wife really wanted to get off that way. Yeah. <laughs> and she even said it when walking out. Like, oh, Ramsey ate sushi off of me. And she was really happy. <laughs> that guy's getting sex tonight. I'm just saying, like... She won't be making love with him in her mind, but he's getting nailed anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's intriguing about MasterChef is that they try to introduce bad guys. I, I like that that manufactured bad guy thing. It's something I read on like in reality shows. I mean, they just want to create the bad guy because normal shows have them, mm. so that you're happy when they lose. But first of all, it gives away kind of the result <laughs> ahead of time. True. And, it, you know, it's it's bad for the person that's being looked like as a bad guy. Yeah. I mean, in The Amazing Race, one year, when, when, when we were in couple, the guy was really competitive and he really pushed his girl to compete. And he, he seemed, they, they really edited him for that so that he would look like he was really kind of abusive almost to his girlfriend. And the girlfriend saw that and she was so angry. Like, he's not like that at all. He's the nicest guy ever. What is this? Oh. When they saw the show. So it's it's really bad for the person. And it, 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 you know, when you learn that, you know, they're editing stuff like that, it's bad for the show. It is. It's not reality show anymore. You're just making stuff up. <clears throat> True. And honestly, in ma in the context of Master Chef, I don't care. Yeah. And you know what I mean? <laughs> and, but anyway, between the two shows, I have to say I like Master Chef a lot more than Hell's Kitchen. I don't know Hell Hell's Kitchen. If you can make a montage of the, the dumb stuff and Ramsey just, you know, knocking them down. That's good, but then you can watch the whole season of MasterChef and enjoy all of it. Yeah. <laughs> the first episode, especially when he tastes like the chef's signature dish, and they're professional chefs, and their dish doesn't taste half as good as the contestants on MasterChef's dishes. It's true. <laughs> it's really funny. So that, that that first episode, and just him and during the services yelling at stuff, like the contest, you know, who can make the best dessert, it was like, yeah. I don't really I'm care. actually kind of interested in that. What I don't like is the rewards. I yeah. don't care. Because what, what happens point. in Hell's Kitchen is like, whoever wins one contest gets to, the team gets to have the day off while the other team has to work hard. And I don't mind watching the team working hard. I think that's interesting how they deal with that dynamic. Yeah. But the team having fun, I'm like, who cares? Yeah. You know? It's not cooking related. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it seems like padding. Yeah. As Master Chef, when they win something, okay, they, they, have it, they don't get eliminated. They're safe. And, you know, that's a good enough reward. Yeah. And the other people have to Based on every test, you know that that's something that's valuable. But you're a chef, you know. Oh, please go get drunk. Mm -hmm. So, cause, because you know, the next day you have a service to make. You yeah, know? they they always make that mistake. They always do get drunk <laughs> and then give a poor performance during the uh, service. Yeah, it's like you would figure people would learn. Yeah, you people drink. you people watch the show <laughs> and you know you learn that, especially since it's pretty intense mm -hmm. and you know you don't get that much time to sleep. So yeah, getting drunk not a great idea. It's really weird, like. If I were an aspiring chef and I decided I'm going to apply for Hell's Kitchen to be a contestant, there's two things I would do. Uh, first is promise myself that I would not drink during the duration of the competition. And the second is learn how to cook effing scallops. <laughs> yes. I, I don't say. <laughs> yes. Hot pan, scallops in, two minutes each side. <laughs> I understand wanting to get laid. I mean, like Carrie and whoever uh, slept with her, I don't remember his name. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a long day. You want to relax. Exactly. <laughs> I understand that. But. <laughs> and, and although I still don't think they should show that in. Like... Well, I, yeah, that's, I was actually deliberately <laughs> using that as a bridge to one of the things I do not like about Hell's Kitchen is uh, a lot of TNA. Yeah. And it's a reality TV show, TLA, so it makes it really uncomfortable. Because, like, fiction TV, TNA, it doesn't matter because the actress accepted to be filmed in her bikini or whatever, you know? It's like, that's part of the contract, that's fine. Yeah. Here, they're here for cooking. They're here to be in a cooking competition and one of the drawbacks is that they have to be filmed in their dorm. 
But what I'm sure they did not expect to be filmed while they're changing, and they keep doing that, and that's not okay. Yes, that's that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. And they don't do it with the boys, you know. That's true. The boys, well, who would want to see that? <laughs> no, it's true. They don't do it with the boys. It's pretty weak. Yeah, it's it, it's wrong. And yeah, I think just for that reason alone, I prefer Master Chef. But I like the show in general more. And so yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you start filming the contestant of MasterChef in their hotel room. Now they're, they're going to be, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> oh my god, they would not be happy. A lot of uh, a lot of mothers and families and like that. Yeah. Uh, the crazy girl. <laughs> oh, she was delightful. I loved her. She, she was clearly an alcoholic. <laughs> no. <I don't> no. <laughs> <laughs> she did drink a lot <clears throat> while cooking. <laughs> Whenever she had access to alcohol while cooking, she would drink herself in a mild stupor <laughs> i mm. think she's a bit of an alcoholic a little bit we think again it's our opinion no no oh yeah not... look i only have the footage that <laughs> yeah. they show if they wanted to make her look like an alcoholic even though she isn't you know uh i believe that you know yeah. if she if she tells us i'm not an alcoholic you just made it look that way and i'm like i believe you you know yeah yeah but uh, they made her look like an alcoholic yes <laughs> A crazy woman alcoholic. <laughs> I loved her though. She was she's she's funny. She's great. Like if, if in real life she's not an alcoholic, I would totally want to date her. She's fun. <laughs> she's eccentric. I, I I I'm all into that. Yeah, I can get the eccentric. She knows how to cook meat. Hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and 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 she's smart. Like one of the things about her is that she knew when she messed up and would improvise really fast. Like there was one thing where she tried to make the filling of a pie and she messed up the pie and she went like, I'll take the filling and make a mousse out of it. And yeah. I'm like, brilliant. That yeah. girl is brilliant. Yeah. Or in the team challenges when she was the leader of it and yeah. there was trouble, she would just improvise on the spot going like, okay, we went in the wrong direction. Instead of going like, we're going to keep on trucking, we're just going to adapt. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Girl is sharp, man. I would meet her in real life provided that she's not an alcoholic. I would give that a try. <laughs> Yeah. The only thing that worries me about her is that, unlike the other contestants, her occupation is enlisted as, you know, uh, uh, engineer or lawyer. Hers is listed as single mother. And I'm like, that's not an occupation. You could make an argument that it's a vocation, yeah. but that is not an occupation. <laughs> I don't know what she does for a living. Homemaker. Well, it, but they didn't write that. Yeah. Because I guess people don't know what a homemaker is. They would think it's somebody that builds houses. So <laughs> people are stupid. <laughs> well, they, they could have said stay at home mom because they, yeah. they, Christian was stay at home dad. So why not stay at home mom? Yeah, it's true. Why single mother? <laughs> and I was like, what does she do for a living? Does she sell drugs or something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> it's a good point. Single mother with mysterious occupation. <laughs> yeah. She's a spy. <laughs> Oh my god, that's what she is! <laughs> She's a bomb girl! She's a crazy one that Bomb was like, I don't know about this, man. <laughs> uh, another thing that I want to see from reality shows, I want to see them do something cool mm. that I would like to do. And that's why I really enjoy The Amazing Race. Because just sightseeing and seeing different uh, uh, famous sites around the world is something I really would like to do if I you know, get a lot of money. So that's why I enjoy The Amazing Race. Something like Survivor, where you're just sitting on an island, backstabbing, trying to see how can we screw this person out of the prize. Not really something I like to do, you know. <laughs> so, not interested in that. I, I like to see, see shows that, reality shows especially, that have something to do with something I find interesting. Going in a similar vein, like one of the things that I find interesting uh, for reality shows, though, is that it has to uh, reward people for me I, I don't like reality shows where people get screwed uh, which is why i don't like survivor i don't like uh, the hills or whatever it's they it's not that they don't get screwed but they don't achieve anything either you know <laughs> yeah that's a good point <laughs> whereas like i will watch uh, uh the biggest loser you know it's, it's not that i'm that interested in losing weight or whatever but it's just uh, these people are really cool and uh, good for them <laughs> it, yeah, it gives me a good feeling yeah they're trying to achieve something even yeah. if they don't win the, the million the, the however money there is you know they, they still achieve something as in they're, they're losing their weight and you know it, it's working for them yeah and the, the same reason I mentioned 9911 I like it as well because these are families with real troubles where the children are not being taken care of at all and in some cases like it almost feels slight it's not abusive but it's just such poor parenting that you feel terrible for the children. And yeah. 9911 comes in and sort of patches and like gives 
things to the kids, like tricks for the kids to not feel terrible about themselves or whatnot. And you're like, oh, she's doing good. You know, I can watch this because she's doing good. <laughs> yeah. So sad, though, some of the parents in there. Though. There's one pet father who he likes to play with his girls but he because he likes to be with his girls, but he doesn't like his boy. Oh, and that's he, horrible. Yeah, it's really terrible. Like, he's watching TV, and the kid wants to play, and the nanny's going like, okay, like, play with your son, for heaven's sake. It's like, and the father's going, ugh. And he goes outside with the son, and then he gets bored, like, about five minutes, and then he lets the kid play outside, and he goes back and he plays TV. And then the girls show up, and then he starts tickling the girls. And so the boy turns around, he's outside, thinking he was playing with his father, turns around, and he sees his father back inside playing with the girls. And you're oh. like, but this is terrible. Like, just terrible. That's insane. Nanny 911 comes in and she tries to teach these things to the father and he's just, he won't have it. He yeah. won't have it. And it's so wise what she did. She was like, she established like, okay, we're going to have son-mother time every every weekend now between this time and that time. And the mother is sort of like learning to get to know her son a little bit better. And she loves it. It was like, it's like, you got to keep that up. It's really important for the mother and the son to bond. It's just because that kid needs a parent to make up for the fact that her his father's a douche. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of nice to see how she maneuvers around that for yeah, the kid. it's nice. It's for the kid. You yeah. Know. I, I think most of these shows... I think the people, the parents that ask for those nannies, they think that, you know, oh, it's going to, you know, the problem stems from the kid. Yeah. Every time. And every time that they're shocked that well, the problem is us. What? <laughs> it's like, it can't, the problem can't be the kid. He's a kid. Kids act like kids. <laughs> yeah. But it can be the kid, but it, it, it never is just the yeah, kid. Yeah. It's, it's rarely just the kid, really. Yeah. Another fun one, kind of a, a joke on reality show was Joe Schmo. Yeah. Where they, they tricked one guy into thinking he wasn't a reality show for money. That was, you know, it was a reality show for him. It was pretty funny how, like, they they had, like, the, the personalities that were all stereotypical of what you saw in reality shows. And they were, like, cranked up to 11, those personalities. <laughs> and it, it was, like, the, the grizzled war veteran. That every time he talked, he talked about the war and his friends that had died. And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So the, if it's funny, it's gonna you know it's gonna get my attention. I'm gonna watch it. Oh yeah, everybody likes to laugh. In the same vein, uh, one of my rules is uh, I do not like schmaltz. I do not like melodrama. Uh, so uh, you know the one of the subtype of reality TV shows, which is actually my favorite, is the contest. Like the you know like so you think you could dance, uh, American Idol, all of that. Yeah. I always disconnect when they try to create melodrama out of it. Like so you think you can dance, Canada is king of that. It's like one of the contestants have not has not been picked to be in the final 20 that's actually going to be part of the rest of the season. And it's like, you can see that their dreams were dashed and you can see crying. And I'm like, shut up. You know, like, I, I, stop trying to create drama where there is none. It's not interesting. It's it's melodrama, schmaltz. Or, or when they have, like, these people struggling with, like, a, I have really, like, a lot of contestants will do that. It's like, I have a lot of self-esteem issues and this is... And so I'm trying to come out of my shell. It's like, look, if you're talking in front of a camera saying you have self-esteem issues, I have the news for you. You do not have self-esteem issues. Because <laughs> somebody who has low self-esteem will not say that in front of a camera. Uh, actually, I think they're all imitating the, the the first winner of Britain's Got Talent. It was the <laughs> opera singer that really had, you could see, he was not comfortable on stage. Mm -hmm. and he was really shy. And people loved him because he had this self-esteem issue that he was trying to work through. So I guess they're tr all trying to emulate him. And, you know, people will love them because they have self-esteem issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, and the thing about it is, first of all, it's the wrong use of the word. They have confidence issues. It's like the guy from yeah. Britain has, has talent. He had low confidence in public. That was his issue. Yeah. His self-esteem is fine because he knew he sang, sang well. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but yeah, you're right. I think they are imitating that. They think it's going to get them votes and I always hate them for that. You know? Yeah, the whole dream is dash. They'll they'll try next year. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> especially since you know. So you think you can dance? You know they they can't t try out after thirty three or something. It's like okay. you're all very young. Like if you're nineteen, it's like my dreams are dash. You're nineteen. Come on, <laughs> there's next year. You'll be better. <laughs> you should not watch the Olympic coverage on American networks. And if you hate that, oh my god, <laughs> I, I do not watch the Olympic coverage on the American networks. I find it unbearable. <laughs> it's the, the profile of the American athlete and it's always super dramatic and everything and then you see his performance and then you see the person that beats him and it's all like all going going back on the American uh, guy he's crying I'm like oh come on we're not here to watch this yeah 
that's one thing uh, American listeners like the uh, the Olympic experience for most of the other countries that I've I've been in and that you've been in is very different because when you watch the Olympics from the Americans' perspective, it's like how well will the Americans compete against the world? Yeah. Whereas in other countries, you may not realize this, but it's completely different. Where it's like the world is awesome. Look at this Ethiopian runner. Isn't he amazing? It's like he's not Canadian. Nobody cares. You know, yeah. it's like he's, he's he's a great runner. He's from Ethiopia. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> You know, look at the, the, this Russian wrestler. He's awesome. And look at this, you know, he's, it was all about the athletes, not about how will the Americans fare. How are, even in Canada, you know, how will our country fare? Oh, we don't care. Yeah, we really, they tried to make a big fuss this winter that we got so many medals and oh, it's so awesome. Yeah, name three Canadian medalists. Nobody can name any of them. It's, true. <laughs> it's, it's a big party for athletes. Absolutely. That's, that's how it should be seen. And in defense to our government, like the CBC, that that's the way they covered it. They did not at all cover it as like Canada, Canada, Canada. They covered it as this international event, which is sort of what yeah. we want as audience members. Yeah. Uh, in China, like the the one in China, the Americans would go like, "Oh, the Chinese did the Chinese cheat?" and like all of that stuff. Whenever the Americans would win, it's like if you watch it from Canadian perspective, it's hilarious. Like, oh, this uh, I, I'm not gonna say a name because it's gonna sound racist if I do because I don't actually know the girl's name. But like, yeah. little Chinese little girl won the gold medal. Wow, look at her! Like you can see how much you're trained. They must train very hard in China. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> look at her; she's so happy and stuff like yeah. that. And yeah, and you know, and you, they did not let it go even five days after the competition. Oh, they cheated! They cheated! It was like, oh my god, <laughs> it's a party for athletes, guys! Come on. I know. Is and, it really? Is your life going to change because like they got the medal and you yeah. and your country didn't? You know, who cares? And still, technically, reality TV. So we're not off topic too much. <laughs> no, it is. You know, it's sports coverage. It's a uh, every two years. There's that that reality show comes back, takes over the airways for about a week or two. Yeah. Yeah, I was on a chat room uh, at one point where uh, the, the the with the Chinese gymnast thing, yeah. and one was like, like, oh, she's she, she's so cheating. She's obviously twelve years old instead of sixty. And I'm like, like, dude, like, are you saying that a twelve year old is better than a sixteen year old because she has four years less training? Because that doesn't make <laughs> sense to me. And he goes like, well, I hope she falls on her face and breaks her neck. And I'm like. Dude, you're talking about a 12-year-old girl. I mean, I would have been offended if it were a 16-year-old girl, but by your own account, you're talking about a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> uh, anybody you wish that would fall on their head, it's just wrong from like 6 to 88 anyway. That's a good point. <laughs> but still. I don't know why I said 6, from like 0 <laughs> to yeah, no, it's like 5-year-olds is all cool. Oh, 5-year-olds are invincible. They're falling their face and they get back up. <laughs> They don't have souls yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if you want to write to us, you can mail us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. And don't worry, guys. Frank and Chris and all the bunch will be back soon enough. See you next time, guys. Now, they're pretty good, and so we're actually going to praise it. Uh, so, a uh, question to ask is, like, how has the evolution gone? Like, what makes a good reality TV as opposed to, you know, old reality TV? Well, it, it's in the name, really, for me. First off, it has to be real. No fakey situations. Uh, the best example of that is Survivor. Uh, Survivor was clamored as in, you know, you put those people on an island and they have to survive. Mm -hmm. Then you watch it, and they're on an island, but they get food provided for them. They have rice, so they're not going to starve. Mm. And then they get eliminated by doing those crazy, silly games, you know, like some agility games and stuff like that. That's not what Survivor was. He was advertised. Uh, advertised that, yeah. And uh, it's kind of silly and gimmicky. And, you know, that's not what, really what I was expected. I, I, if I want to watch reality TV, I would like something real. Survivor is really a game show on sand. Yeah, that's what it is. And um, well, the reason why I don't watch uh, Survivor is because I don't even like the concept of the game show because it's so underhanded. It's like, who, how many people can you screw over? And, and, and not screw over. And nobody forced them to go on the island. Nobody forced... It's not like, okay, you, you young couples are going on the island to test your relationships. You know, they're contestants that decided to go there. Yeah. So I don't see the immoral part of it. They decide to put themselves in that situation. True. And even if you are in that situation, it's not like the horse have guns and go like, you're going to... You're going to F me now, you know, like, <laughs> lick me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you watch that show, it's hilarious because you don't understand how these people fall for it. And and like I'm not like I'm I'm warm blooded. I understand that a very sexy woman in a bikini or a very sexy man with like that those amazing six pack keeps coming on to you, you're gonna be tempted. But I mean, as tempted as I understand I will be, you know, when there's a prize on top of the girlfriend in my mind. No would not be that hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because even if, like, I'm going like, oh, well, you know, this woman's hot, and maybe it won't work out with this girl that I'm with anyway, and maybe she's already doing it with the other guys there. Doesn't matter. Focus on the prize. Take the money, and then you can purchase your own whores. Yes. <laughs> Escorts. Escorts. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic, intelligent critic. And this is relevant because we're going to talk about TV this time around. We're going to talk reality TV, which uh, you know a lot more about than I do. Yeah. That was sort of a sentence. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing I want to stress is that, you know, look, uh, internet being the whole geek area and everything, it's become very fashionable to say, oh, reality TV, bad, rah, rah, rah. And I'm here to warn you right away that uh, that's not how we feel. We're actually going to talk about the good things about reality TV. Yeah. Uh, when it started back, like, almost 15, 20 years ago, with Survivor and all that, I was as reluctant as everybody else. I was like, Arr. Yeah, that, yeah. I totally agree. Back then, it was like, oh, look, how... Stupid human tricks. It was pretty much what it was. Yeah. It was new at the time. They didn't know what they were doing, but never like the mole where it's like, well, the game is trying to discover who's screwing you over, so it's okay to screw over people. Yeah. Like, this is a game where it's like, you really like trying to get favors and then double crossing them, and that's reward, and then like, ew. And, and the winner is not who survives the longest on the island. It's like, at the end, there's like the last few survivors, they vote on who, who, who they want to win, and it's like, that's ridiculous. They always choose, oh, he played the game better. Yeah. Because for some reason, that's that's the, the, the parameter that they decided. He played the banger. Well, not who you want to win. It's mm. who played the game better. That's ridiculous. I mean, arbitrary ways of deciding who wins. Arbitrary. It's just, it's it's very fake for reality. But that tells you a little bit the values of the sort of people that go on to those. You know? <laughs> It's like, they, they don't really respect niceness. Like, reality TV, for especially the ones that start, like, a Survivor is one of the first ever. Yeah. It's not a culture or circle that respects kindness, <laughs> I you guess, know? I guess not. This is not a culture where it goes like, hey, you're a good guy, I like you, man. Here's, here's ten bucks to help you out, because I know you're having trouble right now. It's like, hey, you're a good guy, sap. <laughs> I guess good guys always finish last. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mentality. Because I remember about three or five, four years later, yeah, around the third or fourth season of Survivor, there was a new show that Fox came up with, which was Temptation Island. And the concept of that was that the uh, couples, young couples, very much in love, that want to test their love, uh, are sent to separate islands. The girls are on one side, and the guys are on one side, and you know. And then a whole bunch of whores are sent their way <laughs> to try to tempt them away from each other. And there was quite a stink about it. It was like, oh, it's so immoral. On this podcast, we use the word escort. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I remember it was like, oh, it's so immoral and it's wrong and they're breaking up couples. Yeah, and Newsweek made a piece about that, if I remember correctly. Wow. <laughs> and for me, it was like, but that's better than Survivor because whoever wins... Is the people who keep it in their pants. So the moral here is keep it in your pants. Yeah. 